Los Angeles is now a place I've called home for a year and a half at the time of making this video. When I first moved from New York City, I was captivated by the blue skies, palm trees, and scenic hikes. But does the glamour die down? In this video, I want to break down a few pros and cons to living in the city of angels from my perspective. And disclaimer, this is not meant to be a video hating on LA. I actually really like it here and I don't regret moving here, but let's get into it. Also, it's totally free to like and subscribe so you know what to do. So first, we need to talk about the glamour of LA, which comes from film, TV, celebrities, and influencers giving a glimpse into an ultra luxurious life with their mansions, high-end fashion, wealth, and fame and fortune that so many people do associate with LA. I mean, just look at the Kardashians. They are flaunting their wealth and showcasing this Hollywood lifestyle as attainable, when in reality, they don't even live in the city of LA. Let's just be clear on that, that they live in the suburbs in the private neighborhood in Calabasas, far away from the realities of Los Angeles. Now, what's crazy about LA is that while extreme wealth inequality is very normal here in the US, which is a whole other problem, it's very noticeable here in the city. On one end, you have mansions in Beverly Hills and Calabasas and the Hollywood Hills. And then on the other end, you have probably the worst homeless problem in the United States. We've all probably heard of Skid Row. It's a very real place. It's 4,000 to 8,000 unhoused individuals living on the streets, and this has been going on since the 1930s. How a first world country still has issues like this is another story, but it has always kind of rubs me the wrong way that LA is a place where people are living in the streets right next to empty mansions. Living in the city with a roof over your head humbles you and does make you feel very privileged while at the same time feeling like you're not enough in a city that glamorizes wealth, fame, and fortune. Like you'll often be stopped at a red light in the city and beggars will come up to your car window asking for money. And I think moments like this are when you realize that the LA glamour like is kind of an illusion, let's be real. And again, while this is more of a national problem, rather just LA, it is very in your face here, and it does showcase corruption and human greed at its highest form. Now, the glamour still does exist in some areas of the city, like aside from Hollywood and Santa Monica and Venice, which I think are overrated. Although like if you're a tourist, obviously you gotta do it, but it's not like the heart of what makes LA LA. Some areas like Malibu, Manhattan Beach, where I live in Culver City are all very nice parts of the city. Malibu is like actually otherworldly. Every time I drive the coast of Malibu, I truly feel like I'm in a different place. It's so beautiful, the cliffs are stunning, the sky is more blue, as Miley Cyrus said. Like in my recent summer vlog, I portrayed Malibu as this very beautiful place, and it is, so no lies there. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's exquisite. <laughs> It's, it's exquisite. It's dry, it's hot, but it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and even when I go to the South Beach, for example, the bike path, the strand that goes from like Manhattan Beach to Hermosa and Redondo, that is a really beautiful part of the town as well, which is technically like LA County, not really the city of Los Angeles. But that place in particular is my happy place and I am very willing to spend a lot of my days just going down there to cruise. You know, the Manhattan Beach Pier is just so nice and has such beautiful coastal views and really reminds me of why I do live here in Southern California and Los Angeles. That being said, there probably are other places in Southern California with better sites and exploration value when compared to LA. It's not like I go to the Santa Monica Pier and I'm like, oh my God, what a beautiful, stunning place, you know? <laughs> there are a lot of good hidden gems. I did a video about it. But in general, what I'm trying to say is that glamour does exist in certain areas of LA. You just have to find it. Now, what also rings true about LA is the weather. Now, I don't need to go into detail about this too much because we all know that SoCal has the best weather in the world. I don't need to prove it. I can totally justify paying a lot of money to live in a place where the weather is perfect. Low humidity, 
sunny all the time, temps never below 60, no snow, you know, it's just the perfect weather probably in the world. I don't know, show me a better place. It's so amazing to be in LA in January and go for a warm hike followed by watching the sunset at the beach. I mean, come on. But on that note, also something that's not really talked about is that because of this very consistent, never changing weather, it does feel like time stands still here. So growing up with the seasons, I could always pinpoint what I was doing and where I was in my life based on the seasons. Like, oh, we did that in October because it was a autumn brisk day. We went to that concert that night because I remember it was snowing. But here in LA, I have completely lost touch with when and where things happen because the weather is always the same and you don't have a winter to dread. So you're not spending five months or however long dreading it and just waiting for the spring to come. And because you don't have a winter to dread, it sometimes feels like it just stands and still. Also something to note is that the closer to the beach you are, the more gloomy days you will experience because of the marine layer, also known as the June gloom and the May gray and the even the no sky July. Regardless, you still can't go wrong with the weather of Southern California and I don't need to complain about it. These are just some things I've noticed about the effects of it. But truly, if this city was never sunny and was more of a Seattle vibe, I don't think I could live here. The main selling point of Los Angeles, at least for me, is the weather and the palm trees, period. <laughs> and we need to talk about public transit <laughs> because in a city that is so spread out and not as dense as other cities such as New York and Chicago, it's often been described that LA can feel like one big parking lot. <laughs> Yeah, actually, <laughs> it's true. And this goes back to the development of the city where LA invested a lot of money and effort into establishing the freeway system over public transit. Obviously, LA does get the most flack for being a very car-centered city. I mean, there are other cities that are like this, like look at Seattle, the public transit isn't outstanding there either, but LA definitely gets the most attention, especially for the notorious 405, or as they say, four or five miles per hour, I think it is. For me, LA has kind of always felt like the suburbs with so many different cities that all feel so different from each other culturally. I did a video on that if you want to check out some more LA neighborhoods and how they can really differ. And I also made another video recently about exploring the alternate methods of transportation here in LA. Now it is possible and more people than you think do depend on public transit to get around and don't own cars. You could figure that there is a huge wealth gap between people who ride public transportation in LA and people who don't. For example, in New York, you have stockbrokers and celebrities riding the subway because it's more convenient and there's not many other convenient options to do so. It's less financial status and more so convenience. In LA, you could argue that having a car isn't a luxury like it would be in New York. It's a necessity, at least if you want to have a more convenient lifestyle and be able to travel outside the city and, and really explore LA properly. However, the city does not make owning a car easy either. Basically everywhere you go, you have to pay for parking. Why is it that a city with such high tax rates and not great public transit can't afford good public parking infrastructure? I just don't think that you should need to pay to go shopping at the mall. Um, and yes, some stores do validate if you purchase things, but sometimes you just want to go browsing at the mall and not buy anything, but then you still have to pay 10 bucks to park, or something like that. Or for me, you know, I work remotely, so I like to go to coffee shops, but I'll have to pay the price of parking my car near them, so that kind of brings my cost of coffee to a lot per day. There comes a point in LA when having a car and driving everywhere, it's just like, Ugh. A half hour to go five miles. Okay, sure. Like it just becomes normal. <laughs> That's scary. I'm like, I'm able to film right now because there's so many red lights here. <laughs> so I'm always stopped. But in general, I mean, it's just like, it's really nice to have personal space in a car and I'm like 90 
5% of the country is card culture, right? So I'm probably comparing it to where I used to live in New York City. But like, it's just kind of isolating. You're in your car by yourself and you just see everyone passing by you. Oh, look at this. Always traffic. Getting on the freeway during rush hour too. Oh my God. So this next part can be a little controversial just because I do believe that any city is what you make of it, especially when it comes to the people you meet. But with that being said, LA can be more notably a lonely city. And a lot of this personally can be attributed to the fact that I do work remotely in my corporate job. So I can go weekdays without seeing anyone in real life and just speaking to people on the computer. So I'm sure that's a huge factor. But in a city like Los Angeles, it doesn't make it easier. Because the city is so spread out, you're not just gonna see people walking in the streets and it can be difficult to make plans with friends when they live across the city. Like many times you just end up not even bothering making plans because you know how far it could be to get across the city to your friends. Now, I do have some great friends here in Los Angeles that I met. And of course, moving anywhere is all about finding your people. But I do end up doing a lot of activities and exploring solo, which totally isn't a bad thing because I'm also kind of an introvert and I enjoy my own company. But it definitely can be a city that's difficult to make friends. And I was also thinking about this because I expected to move to Southern California and be surrounded by a lot of like-minded people who love nature and love the outdoors like I do. But I do realize that also LA specifically, a lot of people aren't moving here for that. They're moving here for like the entertainment industry. Also, since people typically do move here for entertainment, it can be very easy to become too involved with phony Hollywood culture. You have to actively not want to be involved, which is why I do spend a lot of time in nature and leaving the city because people's obsession with celebrities and fame here can be overwhelming and the city definitely attracts a certain type of person. And yes, I know I moved here and started a YouTube channel, but I truly do it as my creative outlet, not for fame. Maybe I would have better luck living in like San Diego and finding people who love the outdoors and stuff. Um, but that is something that I've noticed about LA is that a lot of people here like don't even go outside. <laughs> and that also brings to my next point that LA does not have a lot of public parks. Like in New York, you have countless parks and I've lived there for so many years and there's probably still so many that I haven't even been to. Like actual parks that people go to, you know? In LA, I mean, there is Griffith Park, but again, people don't just really go there to hang out and spend time with their friends and read books at least from my experience so far, it's just not a park culture city, I can say that. On the other hand, of course, as a pro, you do have beaches that can kind of be considered LA's version of a park. And that's something that a lot of cities don't have. So having LA on the beach is definitely a privilege, and I do love that because it is nice to end my work day by saying like, hey, I'm gonna go read a book at the beach and listen to the ocean. But still, to my point, in a car culture city that's very spread out, it can definitely feel like a very isolating place. On the contrary to a pro, I love the food here. And as a self-proclaimed health nut, I lean towards more of a plant-based lifestyle. And here in Los Angeles, it is easy to find healthy food anywhere you go. Sort of how like in New York, on every corner you have a pizza spot. Here in LA, right down the street, like I have a family owned vegan takeout restaurant that not many people even know about, but it's so good. The food in my opinion is so good. And while I wouldn't argue that the food in a place like New York, again, I'm comparing it because I've lived there before, um, I can never argue that the food in New York is bad. It's just more carb heavy. Like people love bagels and pizza and the food, that type of food is so good. The Italian food, carbs, carbs, carbs. Whereas in LA, it's the city that starts the health trend, you know, avocado toast, oat milk, spirulina tablets. You might have to fact check me if LA started things like oat milk, but I wouldn't be surprised. And it's definitely more prominent here than any other place for sure. 
And also, even though people don't really walk here because it's all about the car culture, in general, many people, especially that live on the west side of LA, like the coastal cities, are very fit and go running and hiking and biking and do spend a lot of time outdoors. I mean, it's hard not to do that when you live in a place with literally perfect weather, which can be a downside sometimes because sometimes I just want to lay in bed for the day and I can't, I feel like I can't do that here. I literally get guilty because it's always so nice out and being inside makes me feel FOMO, even though I'll, I know I'll get it tomorrow. It's crazy. But yeah, aside from the weather, love the food in LA. It's probably my second favorite thing about living here. It's so easy being an almost vegan. <laughs> and for another pro, you find yourself in California. As cheesy as that sounds, I think in any major city, it gives you the opportunity to reinvent yourself and follow your dreams and your passions. A friend of mine said this in my New York versus LA video I posted that New York is a place that you go to become someone new and LA is a place to find yourself. And I haven't forgotten it because I think it's so true. Because when I moved to New York in my early 20s, I did reinvent myself and I really started creating the next chapter of what I wanted my life to look like. But there was something missing there where I didn't feel fulfilled and happy all the time because New York can also be a place where you get very wrapped in the culture of rat race and job promotions and financial status. Whereas when I moved to LA, I really do believe it gave me the opportunity to reflect on myself and focus on my mental health and really deeply think about my life and what I want it to look like. Less of the trivial everyday grievances like crowded subways and bad weather and jobs. LA has been a place where I could really take a step back and just take a moment to breathe. <laughs> It's also been able to give me a lot of self-reflection. Like if you do watch my videos, you probably know that I do a lot of solo travel here, which has actually been a really positive experience because it gave me the confidence of just being able to be me and doing what I wanna do and not having to wait for other people and putting my life on hold for others. Here, I've just been able to live in the moment more and be present and not always like waiting for summer or waiting for something else and just being here as time is standing still. Following my dreams to the West Coast has been the craziest and the most exciting thing I've ever done. So again, as I said in the beginning, I don't regret moving to Los Angeles whatsoever. Um, I don't know if it's a place I want to stay in long term. I do think there are many other better places in California because again, a lot of the focus of my channel so far has been exploring the places surrounding Los Angeles which are incredible. And that probably is another one of my favorite parts about living in LA is that you have easy access, if you have a car, to all of these beautiful places. Like San Diego is two hours away. You have Santa Barbara about an hour away. You have Malibu and Orange County and Ventura and Ojai. Palm Springs, Joshua Tree, I'm forgetting so many, but there's so many places to explore outside of Los Angeles, and that is by far my favorite part about living in LA is being centrally located. So this is like a kind of a new setup for me in the sense that I don't really film indoors much. <laughs> I'm usually outside vlogging, um, and I'm getting guilty because it's so nice out right now. <laughs> I really should be outside. If you're thinking about moving to LA, let me know um, if you need any advice. I am happy to advise. But again, don't forget to follow your dreams and don't forget to get outside and explore. That being said, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time for more videos. <laughs> Bye.